Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Before I begin today's lesson, I have a question. If I want to know about God, where do I look? In the Bible. The Bible tells me I can look at what God made and I can figure out there's a God. I can figure out he's big and strong, but that is all I can know from looking at creation. If I want to know if God loves me, or what sin is, or especially how to get to heaven, I have to look in the Bible. Well, we are in the Gospel of Matthew, and we've been going through and meeting who is this Jesus, the Messiah. And so we left off last week, Jesus had done two astonishing miracles in Matthew chapter 8, the beginning. He had healed a leper by touching him, and he had healed the servant of a centurion just by speaking. And Jesus is not done with performing miracles. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 8 and keep going and see what we can learn about this Jesus. So we'll be starting in verse 14. When Jesus came in to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began to wait on them. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out spirits with a word and healed the sick. And this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. But a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple came to him and said, Lord, First, let me go bury my father. But Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Then he got into a boat, and the disciples followed, and without warning, a furious storm came on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples went and woke him and said, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And he replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? And he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and it was completely calm. And the men were amazed and asked, what kind of a man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Now let's go back through this series of miracles and see what we can learn. So Jesus is in the town of Capernaum. And he goes to visit the home of Peter and Andrew, and Peter's mother-in-law is sick in bed. Now, we're not told this in the Gospel of Matthew, but in the Gospel of Mark, we find out this is a Sabbath. When Jesus goes home with Peter and John after having been at their synagogue teaching in the morning. And so he shows up, and she's sick. Now, he does something. Does he wait 
for the end of the Sabbath to heal her? No, he immediately goes and touches her and heals her. And she gets up and begins to wait on the disciples and on Jesus. Now, to again, to a Jewish reader, this would be shocking. Jesus just healed on the Sabbath. And even though it didn't say it directly in Matthew, it hints at it because of what it says at the end of the section, when evening came, many who were demon possessed were brought to him. So Jesus had interacted with Peter in -law, Peter's mother-in-law right away during the day, but everybody else had just been waiting for the sun to go down. So for a Jew, the Sabbath starts at sunset on Friday and lasts until the sun goes down again on Saturday. So for us, we count days from midnight to midnight, but it's different for a Jew. So from Friday night to Saturday night, people knew Jesus was in town. He preached at the synagogue that morning, but they didn't bring him their sick until after the sun had gone down on Saturday night because they didn't want to get in trouble for him healing on the Sabbath. But the minute that sun was down, they were bringing to Jesus their sick and their demon possessed, and he healed them all. Again, this would have been amazing to watch. And Matthew ties this to a prophecy in Isaiah. And it's actually from Isaiah 53. And so I'm going to read it to you from Isaiah 53. Because this section is about the Messiah. And this is what it says. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, and yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. So when he had quoted the first part of this verse to the Jews, they would have recognized it, but they would have also been thinking of the second part. So Jesus, in this section, he's fulfilling messianic prophecy. The people had been told through the prophet Isaiah that when Messiah came, he would heal. He would take up infirmities off of people. But also that he would be afflicted and he would be considered smitten by God. So we'll see how that plays out later in Matthew. So after Jesus had done all this healing, the crowds are starting to get thick. And so Jesus said, okay, it's time. We need to cross the lake, which is the Sea of Galilee. But before he can even get to the Sea of Galilee, he's confronted by two people. The first is a teacher of the law, and he's saying, now remember we talked about how did rabbis get students? The students who had already been trained would come to the rabbi and say, Rabbi, I want to learn from you. So this is a teacher of the law coming to Jesus and saying, Teacher, I will follow wherever you go. He's saying, may I be one of your disciples? And what's Jesus' answer? Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. So he doesn't say no, but what does he say to this person who thinks he wants to follow Jesus? He says, count the cost. You can follow me, but you better be willing to go where I go, and it's not going to be a comfortable ride, is it? Are they going to have places to stay and everything they want? No. And then another disciple comes forward and says, Lord, first let me go bury my father. Again, they're following Jewish custom. It's teacher, I want to learn from you, but it's not good timing for me. I need to take care of a family obligation first. And what's Jesus' response to that? Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. He's saying, you have to choose, are you going to honor me? And it's going to mean following me despite the cost of family. So to both of these men, Jesus says the invitation's open, but there's a cost to following Jesus. And he wants both of these men to count the cost. And that's a warning to us too, isn't it? Jesus is not interested in us just claiming to follow him a little bit. He wants our whole heart, doesn't he? And then Jesus finally gets into the boat with the disciples just like he said he wanted to do. 
to sail to the other side of the lake and there's just one problem they get in the boat and what happens a huge storm and where's Jesus asleep and so the disciples come to him and say master wake up we're gonna drown and Jesus gives them the most astonishing rebuke he says where is your faith now that's not what they were expecting him to say at all was it no but here's the question why is he saying where is your faith who's decided that this is the trip they're going to go on was this the disciples idea no Jesus had said we're going to the other side of the lake so guess what they were going to go to the other side of the lake this trip is Jesus idea so whatever happens on the trip is under Jesus's control including the storm so then Jesus gets up rebukes the winds and the wave and the storm just turns off and all of a sudden the disciples had thought they were as scared as could be until this happened now they're even more scared are they scared of the storm anymore no who are they scared of Jesus they're astonished who is this the wind and the waves obey him now what's funny to me is they've just watched Jesus heal a leper they've watched him heal a servant by speaking they've watched him heal people who are demon possessed they've watched him heal Peter's mother-in-law but they are still astonished by this one to see that Jesus has control over not just people's illnesses but even nature so the disciples are off on an adventure and the adventure has only begun because we're going to see next week what happens on the other side of the lake when they get there but we want to be thinking about this as Jesus keeps interacting with different people people that are Jewish people that are not Jewish people that are young people that are old people that have diseases people that have demons storms in nature is there anything that Jesus is not the boss of let's keep watching and find out if there's anything Jesus is not the boss of and let's be humble too as we consider what it takes to follow Jesus let's examine our own hearts and see do I really want to follow Jesus no matter what or do I only want to follow Jesus if it's easy or if it makes me feel good because Jesus is not interested in that kind of a learner to follow him he wants our whole hearts so if you're struggling with that, this is a good time to tell Jesus, Jesus, I need you to help my heart to want to be a true disciple. And I look forward to seeing you next time.